So you've had to reset your wallet or maybe you moved to a new device, but when you try and restore it using your seed phrase, you get a message saying that you have an invalid mnemonic. You know, what are you gonna do? Before you have a panic attack and freak out that you've lost all your money, the good news is that, you know, I do a lot of these recoveries and most of the time, it's a simple transcription error, one or two words wrong. And these kinds of mistakes are the sorts of things that BTC Recover actually can deal with quite easily, normally in under a few hours. If you haven't seen any of my other videos about it, BTC Recover is an open source tool that can be used to help recover uh, seeds and passwords for crypto wallets when you know, you know most of it, but have a typo or something in there. While my previous videos for BTC Recover tended to have you know some fairly long and sometimes complex uh, command line arguments, particularly if you were trying to recover something other than Bitcoin. I've really made an effort to just make the defaults in BTC Recover uh, a lot more useful now. And the reality is uh, the defaults now should work for probably you know 90% of just the basic transcription errors that I come across regardless of which cryptocurrency you are using. So I thought it was a good time just to make another video that just runs through the basics on how to do just a basic seed recovery using BTC Recover. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. So rather than doing anything complicated in this video, I'm just gonna run through three basic seed recoveries. First thing is just gonna be a basic Bitcoin wallet recovery. So I'm just gonna look at recovering a native SegWit address from a Bitcoin wallet where you've got an error in the seed phrase. And we'll just run through how to do that just using all of the defaults. The second thing I'm gonna look at is how to use the Ethereum wallet functionality in BTC Recover to recover a VET wallet from Exodus. Because one of the things with BTC Recover is the Ethereum wallet functionality in BTC Recover can actually be used with any of the you know basic ETH clones that are out there. So it doesn't matter if your wallet is like Binance Smart Chain, Theta, VET, you know, any of these Ethereum clones, they can all be used with BTC Recover. And I'll quickly run through uh, the basic file tweaks that you need to make to be able to do that. The last example I'm gonna look at is gonna run through how to recover in a situation where the address you're using may be from the second account if you're using a wallet like Ledger Live uh, or something like that that allows you to have multiple accounts per crypto. And uh, for this example, I'll be using Dogecoin just because uh, of all the craziness going on with that and the number of requests I've been getting for you know how can I use uh, BTC Recover with Doge. The only other thing I will mention is that BTC Recover is just a simple Python script. And look, it's open source. There's nothing malicious in there. You can check it yourself. But it also doesn't make any attempt to try and keep your seed phrase secure from other things that might be running on your operating system. So, you know, when you are running BTC Recover with your actual seed, be sure to run that totally offline uh, and even better yet in like an amnesic live Ubuntu operating system or something like that. You know, don't just run this on your internet connected PC. First try with your actual seed. At the very least, run it with all your networking turned off and disconnected and only re-enable networking after you have moved your phone onto a new seed. So the first thing you have to do is download and install BTC Recover and I've got a video that covers how to do that here. All right, so what I've got here is a seed and that obviously has a typo in it because it doesn't work. We cannot restore that into a wallet. And let's say we had like a withdrawal from Coinbase or something that showed this address here was ours. So we think that is an address that was part of this Bitcoin wallet. Uh, and I should say at this point, if you don't have the address, uh, that's okay. You can actually just use an address database and I run through how to do that in this video here but I wanna keep this one simple. So we'll just assume that you have some records with the address. Now over here on the left, what I have is basically just the BTC recover folder. That's where I basically just downloaded it and unzipped it. And I have already installed all the requirements uh, as per the video on installing BTC recover. And look, if we're just doing a basic recovery like this one where the defaults are fine, we can actually just double click on seedrecover.py. Just as an aside, if you're running this in Linux, as I suggest you should in terms of security, uh, you can still just run, you know, Python 3 seedrecover.py from the command line, just like normal. Uh, but the key thing with all of these examples is you do not need to go adding any extra uh, arguments or anything like that. Just running seedrecover.py as is, just with all the defaults, will work for all of the examples in this video. There we go. So it's asking for a wallet file. We're just doing a seed recovery, so we don't have one of those. So what we'll say here is it's just a Bitcoin standard BIP39 slash BIP44 wallet. And we'll just say, okay. 
In this case, we don't have the account extended public key, uh, but oftentimes if people have been using like a ledger, you can still get the account extended public key out of like Ledger Live. So that is really helpful if you have it, but in this case we don't, so we'll just say cancel. And basically here, we're gonna enter one address from the first account in our wallet. So we are just gonna enter this address in just here. We're gonna say, okay. Now, this is the address generation limit. So this basically is how far into the wallet it's going to generate addresses. As long as this address here was in the first 10 addresses in the wallet, this default setting will be fine. And now we put in our best guess for the mnemonic. So we'll just copy what we've got, we'll paste that in, we'll say okay. And now it's gonna run. And there we go. So that found the result basically instantly. And here we go. So we can see the error in this one was really simple. So basically the correct word was claim. Uh, and in our record, we had written calm. A simple transcription mistake. And I see this kind of thing all the time. All right, so for this next example, we have a faulty seed from Exodus and we have this VET address here that was associated with that wallet. Now for VET and for any other ETH clone, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna just edit some derivation path lists. So in the BTC recover folder, there is this folder here called derivation path lists. And if you go into that, it basically has a list of files that correspond to all of the different cryptos that are supported that you can select when you're doing a seed recovery. And basically, uh, for ETH clones, we are just gonna open this eth.txt just with notepad or something else. We'll just quickly run through what you find in that file. So firstly, you have this top line here, which says lines starting with a hash are ignored. So by default, uh, when you select an ETH wallet, it checks these two derivation paths. So that means that by default, the uh, Ethereum function on BTC recover will work for both current and legacy uh, derivation paths for most Ethereum wallets. Um, and if you know exactly which one you have, you can actually comment out the ones you don't need. Uh, but honestly, I find people tend to run into trouble by uh, commenting out too much stuff. Uh, so it's better to have a few extras checked by default. So basically in this situation, because we are looking for a VET wallet, all we need to do is basically uncomment the line for VET, which is this one here. So I've just removed the hash from the start of that line. And because we know it's a VET wallet, we also can actually comment out the two lines for the standard Ethereum wallets here. So you'll now notice I've added a hash onto those two lines. So now the Ethereum function in BTC recover is only going to check for VET wallets. And again, the same process is true for if you had any of these ETH clones, you just uncomment uh, the one you need. Uh, and the one thing I should say is if your wallet is a Binance Smart Chain one, that just uses the default Ethereum derivation path. So you can just leave all the defaults as is for Binance Smart Chain, you don't need to change anything. And then once you're done, you just say file, save, and you can close that file and you're done. So if we go back into the BTC recover folder now, and we just run seed recover just like last time. We'll again say cancel because we don't know which wallet we have. And this time we are going to select that we have an Ethereum wallet. Uh, again, you can see the note there or ETH clones depending on what you've enabled in that file, which is the one we just edited. We'll say okay. Uh, we don't have an extended public key. Those are less of a thing for Ethereum wallets. Um, at least one address. So that's this address here. So we're gonna copy and paste. When it comes to account generation limit for Ethereum wallets and those that don't change the address every time you hit receive, you could actually just get away with a, an address generation limit of one, that would be just fine. In the context of coins like Ethereum, this address limit uh, mostly relates to uh, how many accounts you want to check. Uh, so again, you can change that to one. We'll just leave it at 10 because there isn't a huge performance penalty from just leaving it at 10 anyway. And again, it's less likely that you're gonna stuff something up. So we'll just say, okay. And now we put in the best guess of our mnemonic. And there we go. And there we go. This time you can see it found it basically straight away. Uh, it only had to go through about 9,000 different ones before it found it. And again, it found it on the VET derivation path. And uh, if you look at this seed here, you can see that the mistake was basically that these two words here had been swapped. So again, very simple mistake. So the last thing I'm gonna look at is just a standard BIP39 wallet where maybe you had a Dogecoin address, but you knew that you had multiple accounts 
in that Dogecoin wallet and you weren't sure which account this came from. So again, we're gonna go back into this derivation path list file and we're gonna open Dodge. So basically by default, it will just check the first account, but we want to look at the second account as well. In fact, let's look at the first three accounts. So what I'm gonna do is change this last number here that is the hardened part of the derivation path. Um, so we're basically by changing it to be you know zero, one, and two, we are going to be checking the first, second, and third account. So basically, once we've made that edit, we can just say save, and we will close that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into BTC Recover, and again, we're just going to stick with all the defaults. So we'll just double click on seedrecover.py. We don't have a wallet file. This is a Dogecoin wallet, so we'll say okay. We don't know our account extended public key. We do know this address, so we'll say okay. Uh, and we'll just leave the address generation limit at 10. Put in our best guess of the mnemonic and we'll let that run. There we go. So this time it actually took a bit longer. It still, you know, only took a few seconds, uh, but it actually, you'll notice, got into the second phase. So the first phase uh, is essentially just looking for two mistakes, uh, excluding entirely different words, so just really simple typos. Whereas the second phase also allows for one mistake, which can be an entirely different seed word. And we can see that it found the matching seed that is on the second account. And if we look at the seed phrase, you can see that our backup of the seed phrase had the word eyebrow twice, whereas this one actually had eyebrow and expect. A single word error, one that was entirely different, but often, and, but actually a really easy error to make. Because when I do trusted recoveries, I see wallets where people have made really simple transcription errors like this all the time. And uh, often BTC Recover solves them within seconds. If you're just starting out with BTC Recover and you're just trying to get familiar with the tool, my advice is always just start with the kinds of examples that I've done in this video, just replicate the whole thing exactly. Um, you know, sometimes just generating a test seed in Ian Coleman's BIP39 tool can be a good approach and I've got a link to that tool in the description. In terms of all of the defaults, uh, you know, BTC Recover running through and checking everything up to and including uh, two completely different uh, wrong words in your seed can take a couple of hours depending on your hardware. But again, I find that for most of the recoveries I do with people, it, it is rarely more than uh, two words incorrect in your seed phrase, unless you've done something crazy like scramble your seed or you've lost half your backup or you've done something like that. And look, if you're totally stuck or you're just not confident to do this, uh, there are a number of paid options that I offer as well. So if you would like a paid consultation just to you know run through setting up BTC Recover and making sure you're familiar with how to use it with some demo seeds, uh, you know I can do that. Or there's also the trusted recovery option if you're just totally flustered and uh, not confident to do it without screwing it up at all. And the details for both of those, price, process, and terms are on my website. There's a link in the description and below right now. As always, if you want free support, that happens in the comments section on YouTube. So if you're stuck, just leave a question in the comments and I do my best to reply to every question that is asked uh, as long as your question doesn't get picked up and nuked by the uh, spam filter for my channel. It's also really important just to manage expectations. So BTC Recover is not magic, all right? It is a brute force recovery tool and you have to have the vast majority of your seed intact for it to be able to work. So if you have lost like all of your seed words, I'm sorry, this tool is no good to you and there frankly is no tool or way for you to recover. You know, if you've lost all of your seed words, those funds are gone and anyone telling you they can do that recovery for you just magically, they are a scammer. Uh, likewise, if you have lost, you know, more than two or three of the words in your seed, then that's not really practical to recover at this time. Uh, it might be in, you know, 20 or 30 years time. Uh, but, you know, if you've lost six of the words out of your seed phrase, I'm sorry, that's not something you can recover uh, now either, though it might be doable within a few decades. So, you know, don't throw out uh, those records that you do have. Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.